Safety and Just Affairs Committee meeting of Tuesday, February 18th. Roll call, please. Calling the roll, Mr. Gallagher. Here. Ms. Baker. Here. Mr. Tuma. Mr. Tuma is absent. Mr. Brady. Here. Ms. Conwell. Present. There is a quorum. Also, like the record to reflect that Councilman Miller is in attendance. Welcome, Mr. Miller. Public comment? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. No one is signed in. In your packet, there are the uh, meeting minutes of January 21st. If they're in order, I'll accept the motion in a second. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you. We're going to go a little bit out of order. Uh, resolution 2020-0048 first, please. Resolution number 2020-0048, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE1700361 with University Hospitals Cleveland Medical Center, doing business as University Hospitals Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital for health care and management services at the Juvenile Court Detention Center. in the detention center. Um, we are only asking for a one-year extension for this project. Um, simultaneously, while doing this amendment, we're also looking at releasing a RFP or an RFQ for this project for 2021. So this amendment will cover our staffing costs for the physician that comes 10 hours per week. It will also cover the nursing charges that we incur. Um, there is also going to be a 3% increase for the salaries for these staff that are here in our detention center. The nursing model that we have right now, we only have 9.8 full-time equivalent staff in the clinic in the detention center. And UH has um, discussed with us the need to increase that um, due to the amount of kids that are coming in and out of the clinic. Um, so we are increasing the full-time equivalent to 10.4 as well. Uh, we are also going to implement a electronic medical record system in the detention center. So this will allow um, things like my chart to go back and forth between the hospital as well as the court. Right now, the staff are still using paper records. Um, so if we can implement this new system, whether it's UH or any other provider coming in, the equipment will be there so that they can communicate the records to the home hospital as well. Um, we are also asking for an increase of 1.7 million for this contract. Um, 1.2 is kind of set aside and designated for just the physician and nursing coverages, which is like a monthly fee. And then we are adding in 500,000 of our special revenue funds to kind of cover the extra costs that we've incurred for the kids going out of the building for medical care. Thank you. Is this a bid contract? We did back in 2017, we bid it out, and University Hospital won that bid. Um, Who were the other bidders? Metro Health okay. was the only other one at that I've time. I've asked this before, not to you, and if you don't know it, you don't know it. Wouldn't it make sense to have all of the prisoners in Cuyahoga County under basically the same umbrella? And by that, I mean, we worked the deal with Metro, and it took many, many years to do that. Um, and, and it is expensive, as we all know. Uh, actually, we've been here quite a few years. We tried earlier on getting medical, electronic medical records into the jail, and there was quite a bit of pushback. Uh, so we, we ended up winning that one, and, and that's turned out to be rather uh, beneficial mm -hmm. to not only the county, but the providers and the, the inmates themselves. So I'm wondering, it, it just seems to me that while we, we accelerated that process 10 years ago, here we are not talking to you, and you're just dipping your toes into those waters. So I'm asking you thought process as to coordinating everybody being under one umbrella? No. When we did bid it back in 2017, UH did come in a couple hundred thousand dollars cheaper. So that's mm -hmm. kind of why we went with UH in the first place and made that switch. Um, I do not believe that electronic medical records was ever brought up by Metro or the court when they were with us. Um, and this is something that UH has continuously brought up while they've been with us. 
Um, and the court is seeing a need that this could benefit everybody involved. You know, this, the nursing staff, it's going to benefit the kids that are seeing doctors outside of the detention center, and it's going to help the providers that are still doing the, the paper records. Um, and I know that we're putting the money into this amendment so that we can make the purchase of all that equipment, the hardware, the access points, the computers, monitors, things like that. If we make that purchase when we do this RFP or RFQ or maybe we switch back to Metro, whenever they come in, all the hardware and all of that is already there so that it wouldn't be something that you know UH could take with them when they leave. It would be there so that whoever coming in could access it as well. Right. I'm familiar with this, and uh, it, it's kind of interesting. It's I'm not going to say it's easy, but I will say it's easy. It's a very easy process to do it, and the argument against it was it's so difficult to do. It's not not difficult at all. It's a dedicated phone line. Quite honestly, that's that's where we're at. So it wasn't hard to do, and the pushback was was just pushback. People just didn't want to do it. So we got it done, and what I'm saying to you is, and what I'm asking the committee maybe is, uh, this maybe should be reviewed as far as our umbrella medical for prisoners, inmates, detainees in Cuyahoga County, regardless of it's juvenile or it's over at the Justice Center. So maybe that's a discussion, broader discussion for a later time. We can definitely do that. Yeah, but uh, just let the court know that it's on our mind. And usually there's cost savings involved if that's the way you go. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, going forward with this right now, I really don't have a problem. But down the road, I would like to see a review of everybody and being on the same page. Are there questions from the committee? Sure. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Baker, how much did we spend on this contract in 2019? In 2019, we allocated $1.2 million, um, and this year we're going to allocate $1.7. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Baker, but it's basically the same. It's it's one point two for the services and 500000 for medical records. Is that correct? The one point two in 2019 was able to cover the doctors and nurses coverage, but it also covered the out of building medical expense. And that's kind of what's been steadily increasing throughout 2019 is the kids going out of the facility to a UH hospital for care. So the additional 500 that we're adding out of our special revenue is more so to cover simply just the out of building medical care. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Baker, how how is the cost of the uh, electronic medical records being paid for? That is a thirty thousand dollar expense that we've kind of worked through with county IT and UH's IT and courts IT to figure out what all types of equipment we would need, and a quote was given to us for about thirty thousand dollars for all of the equipment that we would need. And Mr. Chairman, Ms. Baker. Uh, the new contract that you're going to do an RFP for, is that contract only going to be for one year or is it going to be for longer? We're hoping that for 2021 when we either go with Metro, we look at other hospitals in the area or even UH, that it would be a longer term contract. The only reason that we are doing a one year now is because we've noticed the need to kind of look elsewhere besides UH. But we also didn't have enough time to, you know, bring in a brand new medical provider that would have to, you know, set up and learn the system that we have at the court. So this year will give us that time that we need to RFP or work out an agreement with Metro or whatever we choose to do and have them come in and be able to set up appropriately to start providing medical care for the youth in the detention center. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Ms. Baker, final question. Uh, when you said we realize the need to look look beyond UH. Is there some problem with UH that prompts that statement or is it more a matter of, of that you feel it's wise to look at what, what other opportunities are out there to see if any might be better? 
There's never been an issue with care or you know the the staff in the detention center. It's more so we're looking at how much it's costing us to send the kids out, mm -hmm. and that's been astronomical. <laughs> um, we're also trying to entertain the idea of possibly billing Medicaid for the kids going out of the facility. Um, for the care that they're receiving and we've had a little bit of issues kind of work through that process with the University Hospital and their billing department um, so we're hoping that like I said when we do this RFP or we look elsewhere that we can kind of build that in right up front that we want you know Medicaid build and so that they can prepare for it up front thank you are medications baked into this Medications we have through AccuScripts Pharmacy, which is a separate contract. Okay, and that's where we found, unbeknownst to us until we found out, is where Metro saves us the money, because hmm. they have the ability to do that. And you bet you didn't know about that? They, we actually sent them the RFP when we did the last pharmacy um, mm -hmm. bid, and they did not respond. Okay, okay, yes ma'am. I'm just curious. Um, when you have the team together uh, reviewing the electronic records uh, and UH is involved in that, mm -hmm. does that give them an advantage for when you were to go back out for uh, an RFP that they actually have the, they're familiar with it, maybe they added some things or did some that are perhaps, that works well with UH? I mean, is, is it... Do you have any issues there that working with UH and using their suggestions and implementation that it could give them an advantage if we were to go out to look for another supplier? I don't believe that it would, and that was another one of the reasons why we made sure that we involved county IT because we're not the IT experts, um, and we needed them to kind of tell us that these are just the basic components we need so that their system can hook into ours because right now our building isn't even outfitted for this. And it, and it wouldn't. It, it, it would not. Okay. Is uh, everyone uh, comfortable with moving forward on this? Looking at the timeline, um, we're a little bit late again. Yes, we are. So I would assume you'd want to move this under second reading? Yes, please. Anyone concerned about that? I'll accept a motion for a resolution 2020-0048 to the full council under second reading suspension. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 2020-0045. Resolution number 2020-0045, making an award on requisition number 47681 to Ozan Construction Company in the amount not to exceed $825,000 for design bill services for the central booking project at the Cuyahoga County Justice Center. Mr. Dever. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Michael Dever with Department of Public Works along with Matt Reimer from Public Works and we have others also, Chief of Staff Mason too with us. Uh, I'm here today to speak to you specifically on uh, the item uh, that was referred to committee. Um, as you know, um, back early last year, we moved forward with the Justice Center assessment and operational review of that overall facility. Uh, a primary focus of that facility was to look at, uh, or, or the first focus was to look at jail and the operations at the jail. What came out of those discussions and uh, the steering committee, which is made up of 12 individuals that was agreed to through an MOU, is that the, through operations, the central booking concept came uh, to the forefront as a way to uh, manage jail population. Uh, this initiative was, uh, as we believe, is uh, critical to move forward with in the short term, even though in the long term measures, we look at this as part of a, uh, uh, an improved justice center. Uh, but in the short term, we think it's ideal that we move forward with this initiative now. So we have gone through a process uh, of identifying a design builder to help us identify, uh, to uh, uh, build and construct this central booking concept within uh, jail one of the, of the uh, Justice Center. Um, we've identified the third floor of that facility as the primary location, and we are making efforts right now to uh, clear out that area. And in turn, then, uh, if we go through the process of hiring this design builder, 
is then they'll move forward and uh, help us through a design and build out of that facility. Matt is going to give you an overview of that, uh, uh, of how we went through the process, and uh, and then we're here to answer any questions you may have on that. Right, and it's interesting to us, I think, to know who was involved, what facilities you went to to look at what what their what their buildings and areas of provision provide. Um, and then how we got here today. Okay, Matt, if you could give us the overview. Mr. Chairman, Matt Reimer uh, with Public Works. Uh, so this uh, requested legislation was the result of an RFP that we put out in late 2019 for design build services. Uh, the RFP closed on uh, January 24th of this year. We received three design build uh, team proposals. Uh, we convened a selection committee on January 28th of this year, and we scored those three proposals based on the pre-established evaluation criteria that was in the RFP. The highest scored proposal is that, that which we're presenting today, that of Ozan Construction Company using Richard L. Bowen and Associates as the project architect. Who were the other two? The other two was a Turner Construction uh, uh, proposal and a Panzeca Construction proposal. Turner was using uh, VAA, uh, uh, Van Aken Aachen Architects, as their designer, and Panzeca was using K2M Design as their designer. As is typical with these design build services contracts, uh, and by typical I mean the last few projects that we've done through the design build methodology, we anticipate having two phases of contract award before council. This first phase, which is the initial contract value of 825,000, and that is intended to cover pre-construction services and planning, design phase of the design fee of the architect, the project general conditions and initial site logistics, uh, the demolition phase of the program, and material procurement of any long lead uh, items to set us up uh, for success on the overall construction schedule. We would then be back for a second phase called the GMP amendment, uh, the guaranteed maximum price amendment. After the design phase is over, the design builder would present to us their guaranteed maximum price. We would negotiate that, and then we would come before you again for an amendment. So this will be a two-step process as it has been in the past. Uh, to put it into perspective of the other moving pieces that define the central booking project, this is one of them, one of the three. Getting this contract ready so that when, we're, when the Justice Center Executive Steering Committee endorses the, uh, the criteria documents and the plan moving forward on central booking, we have a design builder ready to uh, begin design and construction of that project. The second piece is uh, that action by our what is called our criteria architect, and that is the DLR group who is leading the consultant uh, team for the Justice Center Executive Steering Committee. They are preparing criteria documents. Those criteria documents are expected to be uh, delivered to us at the end of the month, upon which hopefully we will have uh, uh, approved through this body and, and the full council uh, the contract for the design builder who that can receive those criteria documents and begin designing and doing their prep work to uh, construct the project. The third piece is, you met, the director mentioned space identified in jail one. That space is currently occupied, so we have to do prep work to uh, look to uh, relocate uh, those uh, operations. Those happen to be sheriff's laws for law enforcement operations. Um, last month, uh, when we presented the lease uh, to this for the city police building, you heard me mention that we'll be doing some relocation of the sheriff's office into that police building. That is to make way for this uh, central booking uh, concept. So we are in uh, the process of working collaboratively with the division of police and preparing our design and planning of relocation um, in the coming spring here anticipated that we would uh, move some sheriff's operations to the city police building and make way on the third floor for this central booking project. So with that, that's, uh, those are my prepared comments on the legislation in front of you. I'm happy to answer any of those questions, sir. Okay, and I, probably for Mr. Mason, is this, uh, if we build it, they will come kind of situation? Because from our perspective up here, the council has been very aggressive in telling the administration, I know the administration has gotten on that train to get this thing done but to have this properly done, should not all these municipal courts be coming and in, become involved with this? Or are we just going to cherry pick what we have and then move forward in the anticipation or hopes that they're going to come on board? 
I would say that it's not if you build it, we, they will come. I would say that more accurately, we are going to uh, run the facility initially with the city of Cleveland and Euclid, and, and Euclid being a big uh, one of the big municipalities, and and uh, make sure we get it because it's new, get it down, get it right, and then I'm sure um, it will be to the advantage of the municipalities to partake in that, and they will come. And and I agree, but getting those municipal courts to agree is going to be the municipalities i think if they had their vote to do it we'd be in good shape but it's the uh, kingdoms of the municipal courts that we have to uh, batter those walls down to you know get get them to come on board and we certainly don't strong arm them doing that but i'm just you know we're, we're once bit twice shy i think because of the jail situation and, and where we're at with that and I'm just wondering if maybe we're, are we, are we being too aggressive? Are we being properly moving forward? I don't know. Uh, have we thought of that? I would suggest that w this is the right step. So to, to try to bring the municipalities, and now, as you mentioned, there's a lot of other issues we'd have to deal with, one. Uh, but two, um, I have had some light conversation with some of the municipalities, courts that I'm familiar with. They're we did this, if you may recall, back in like 2003, 2004, we had all the municipalities um, uh, sending their defendants down to common police court directly. So they, they'd they set a bond, find probable cause, and they'd send them downtown, and they were done with it. That all got abolished after I left as the county prosecutor, but the same concept will come into play. I mean, they will eliminate the need for a preliminary hearing in a real hearing in municipal court and um, send the people our way. Uh, I believe that in the long run, it's the best way to handle this this process of converting the uh, felons from the municipalities to the common police court into into our jail. They're headed this way, no matter what path they take, whether they stop at Muni Court or not. So, if we put this central booking in place with Euclid and Cleveland, I think we can refine it very quickly and make it work efficiently. And what will the things that will be happening is we'll do, be doing an assessment right up front, find out mental health, opiates, alcohol, whatever it might be up front, uh, get them into a detox or get them into treatment or divert them out of the jail altogether. Part of that is going to be bond and, and bonding, and so that's a step we're going to have to work with in our court. But um, this is something I have worked on, you know, go back 15 years. In fact, <laughs> I've kept my uh, um, my central booking process that I put together back in July of 2005. So this concept is not new. It's established. It works in other communities. I'm certain it'll work here if we, um, if we take the right steps. What we've been struggling with a little bit, uh, but we've decided just let's go because I, I think the central booking, once we put it in place, we'll be able to establish a real a reduction in jail population and a number that we can use and rely on when and if we get to the determination that we'll have to make it once whether we're going to replace the jail and how big should it be. Um, my guess is we do this central booking in the current facility and put it in as cheap as possible. Um, we will then know how this will work. We'll know in about a year from now after, or a year from operations what we should expect our population to be for any new facility. And then we can build it to that size and kind of rely on those numbers. Um, it's, for some of you who have been to those meetings with the consultant, they're suggesting that with central booking and diversion that these numbers that we currently have in the facility could, could be halved down to 1,200, 1,300, but you don't really know that number. And um, my thought is if we move forward, first we'll save money by diverting people from the jail, but secondly, we'll have a real accurate number upon which to, we can rely on when we size up what the next facility to be, if there is to be one. All right. You, you mentioned Euclid. What's with Euclid? So Euclid is closed. Uh, it closed on July, uh, July January 31st, right. and uh, has been, uh, maybe Rhonda could probably talk, we probably get about 20 inmates, is that what we said? A, a week? 20, 20 inmates a month. Um, yeah. And we felt the need to do that. Obviously, uh, we had made an arrangement in the past to uh, operate the Euclid facility. And uh, they relied on that, and their prisoners were being processed through there. So uh, we thought it was in the best interest to take their prisoners, just like we take Cleveland, directly into our jail, um, and then 
handle that part of it because there's no longer an operating facility in Euclid. So we are, that's what we are doing as of the 31st of January. Right, but there's no anticipation of using that facility going forward. We don't have that anticipation at all. No. Okay, okay. The, um, are there any questions from the committee? Just, yes, ma'am. Just a clarification through the chair. Um, I thought you said that we had, this contract was 800,000? So that's the anticipated initial value um, based on the uh, submission of the pricing proposal from the design build uh, team um, and then uh, speculating on what level of pre-construction services we would want to get through in early packages of demolition. So yes, that is the, that's the anticipated uh, initial phase of contract, yes. And the legislation says 825000 not to exceed? Yes, not to exceed 825000 yes. I'm sorry if there's a, that's the intended value. Uh, so why would we value. get 825 if it's? going to be around we never put cushion I think in the contracts before if you're saying stating that it's 800,000 why do we have the 825 uh, perhaps I've uh, I'm just wondering if the legislation is wrong before us it says 825 not to exceed all of our preparation was for 825,000 I apologize if I've overlooked a uh, okay. I didn't bring the act of legislation with me It was intended to be 825,000, Councilwoman. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so that's correct. Yes, sir. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, directors, when when uh, when you get the the guaranteed maximum price. Is that going to be in addition to the eight hundred and twenty-five thousand, or 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 is the eight hundred and twenty-five thousand an estimate of the total project cost, which will then be adjusted when we get the GMP? Uh, through the chair to Councilman Miller, it is anticipated that it would be in addition to um, the base project in the request for proposals was a four million dollar basis of responding to the proposal. Now that was just based on our early estimates from the criteria architect. As I mentioned, the criteria documents that they will providing, be providing this month will then be the new basis for which this design builder estimates and evaluates and designs the project. But so just going off of the early um, assumption of $4 million as the basis value, to answer your question, yes, it would it's anticipated that it be in addition to the 825,000. What's the projected time frame for start construction and complete? We would anticipate with award of this legislation and the resulting contract to have demolition begin in the spring of this year. Uh, when we get the criteria documents, we will then be able to step through design and by uh, late spring be in a position to come back to you for the guaranteed maximum price and then construction in earnest. A lot of that will depend also on the approval of the state of Ohio Bureau of Adult Detention on the overall project design. So are you anticipating a completion sometime in 2020? We are. We anticipated that, and that was in the RFP uh, as the basis schedule for, uh, for completion. And uh, once, once the project is completed and, uh, and up and running, can you explain how the booking process will be different from what we currently do? Yeah, I'll do that. Well, currently, um, when the inmates are brought in, they're usually uh, they're coming from Cleveland. They come directly off after they've had their uh, their hearings in municipal court. They're tran <clears throat> they're transported transported over to uh, our jail, and at which time probably let Rhonda or the sheriff go through the process that it goes through. But their process, and that up front there is an assessment done by Metro Health. They're kind of diagnosed. Um, but there's no, um, there's no ability to try to uh, take a holistic approach to when they're coming in. They're coming in, they're being uh, put into our uh, jail facility. And what we would like to do in the central booking is be able to get them assessment, get them uh, drug tested, get them detoxed, whatever might happen first. And if, if, if there's a possibility to divert them from the jail, to get them from, rather than booking them into the jail, but 
uh, find those that are capable to be diverted out and divert them out. If they're staying with us, uh, then of course, um, they're gonna be processed as they normally are and, and housed as they normally are. But the key um, early part is getting them, getting the prosecutor to charge early and getting a public defender down there, getting mental health services down there, pretrial court pretrial services in central booking to try to have all that stuff working up front so that we could, again, try to keep them from coming in. If they are coming in, get them, get them on the right meds or get them off the alcohol or get them off uh, the drugs that they're on and trying to process the case quicker to a resolution, whatever that might be. Um, it's a, there's a big delay from the time of arrest to conviction, and if we can shorten that window, it's, it, first, it's better for everybody involved, and secondly, it saves dollars. So, Mr. Chairman, Chief Mason, are you saying then that under the current process, there's an initial process in Cleveland followed by a second process at the county, but under, under the new program, there will not be two separate processes. It'll, it'll all be done at our central booking facility. I'm not saying that. I'm saying ideally that's what it would be. We still are working with Cleveland to figure out how that might be. Um, but that's the intent. That would be the intent, yeah. The intent. Okay, thank you. And for the committee, the discussion items really segue into this legislation. So if you have anything outside the box that may be considered, go ahead. We have everybody up here. Yes, Ms. Baker. I think this does. Um, and I'm just, I guess, curious and more of the big question. We're talking about investing about $5 million, would you say? $4 million in construction, another eight twenty-five. dollars I hope not. Well, that's what I heard, <laughs> isn't it? Four, yeah. About four million in construction, and then another eight hundred and twenty-five in design. That's correct. So okay. um, initially, working through our consultants, DLR and PMC, um, we were they are familiar with these concepts, a central booking concept, in other places in the country, and what it would take to build out that facility. Uh, in the long run, here, this like this room here. This is how central booking would operate. Right in the center of the room here is where the inmates would be. There'd be a series of offices around the perimeter here where the public defender, the prosecutor, the, um, the, uh, 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 the drug, the assessment people would be there. And then also if a hearing needs to take place, they'd be able to take people from there. So the idea is to move the process very quickly. And right now it, it functions within roughly an eight-hour period of the day. The idea is to turn this ultimately into a 24-7 type of operation. Mm -hmm. So we have to change the concept of how we're currently doing things. Mm -hmm. So at first, I don't believe it will be a 24-7, but it will evolve, I, I believe, into that as we get it going. But um, the space needs, because right now the area we're talking about converting into the centralized booking area is not a, an area that is uh, fortified to meet the uh, Ohio Department of Corrections standards. So that's where there is a cost issue. And Chief Mason is really uh, uh, very, has a very strong opinion on this, is that we need to do this at as low as cost as possible to make it obviously safe for everyone. And that was the direction that I've been, we've been moving forward within Public Works. So at the far end here, we see this as a $4 million project, once again, utilizing our consultants that are familiar with building out these type of facilities, that they are the ones that came back at that. But we're asking both the design uh, builder that we're bringing on to is to look at alt alternates, low-cost alternates, to make this uh, re be realized. So that's our effort. Okay. We want to get to that, but we wanted to be very frank with you and bring forward a true cost that it could ultimately go to. And I know we're going to be talking about the uh, county jail and justice center. So, but before we do, in the big picture of investing at the justice center, the four to five million, hopefully closer to four, um, how long do you think, at least, how long do you estimate that this would be useful in the justice center before we would make any decisions to move and this would be perhaps even demolished? Uh, through the chair to Councilwoman Baker. I know you've ba had conversations about that. Yes, uh, through the chair to Councilwoman Baker, and to build off uh, a response that the chief of staff had, and then going back to the public meetings, the last two I believe were this. These type of numbers were presented by the uh, uh, to the committee uh, by the DLR group. Um, 
the investment that you're making here would ideally be realized in significant savings in not building what you don't need in the initial construction of a new jail, if that were to be the option that is selected, or the operational savings in uh, the long-term operational savings of avoiding that by understanding and proving this concept now uh, versus, uh, versus over-designing, over-facilitating, and over-populating the, the new facility if, if one were to be selected. Okay, and that's also if the jail were to move, same concept, same? Yeah, we believe so, yes. And, and the timeline on this, um, since there isn't a hard decision on what's going to happen with the facility, both the jails and the Justice Center, you know, that steering committee is continuing to work through that, the determinations. I know members of the committee here serve on that, on that board. Um, hopefully, we will have some decisions in the near future, but figuring out how to pay for it also yeah. is a huge endeavor. Mm -hmm. At a minimum, it will take close to two to three years to construct something like that. Mm -hmm. So just getting to the decision, trying to figure out how to finance it, we really see this as anywhere from four to five years out mm -hmm. until you'll be able to see some type of new facility in place. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Sure. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Chair? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, whoever would like to answer it, uh, we heard items in the Board of Control this morning, contracts for housing prisoners from Richmond Heights and, Rid and Woodmere and, and some, some contracts related to various uh, entities within the city of Cleveland and and we held it in the Board of Control to get more information. And, and I'm just trying to get a better understanding of, of where that fits into what we're planning to do going forward. Is, is that something that we're planning to, uh, to phase out, or is there a reason for continuing to do that? Does it relate to our diversity efforts? How does, how does that fit in? Well, Mr. Miller, uh, through the chair, um, I know that we've had, that there are some contracts that uh, had came up for renewal with the municipalities. A um, couple of the municipalities fed into the Euclid Jail. I believe those were um, Brattonall as well as Richmond Heights. On, on average, we take in approximately five inmates from I believe the six municipalities per day combined. Uh, the contracts, I believe, were three-year agreements with some of these municipalities. We wanted to cut those down to one-year contracts uh, so that we could review those, uh, only because we didn't want to take, you know, they've had contracts for a while even before I stepped into this role, and we didn't want to just pull their contracts out where they'd be like, well, now what do we do with our prisoners? Where, where do we house them? So uh, I believe that's part of the reason that these contracts were put forward to the Board of Control again. Um, I'm sure that uh, Director Gibson or uh, Donna Khalil from our fiscal office could possibly add some more detail than what I'm providing you right at the moment. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, to follow up on that, uh, I'm trying to get some sense of what the strategy is. Where are we going with this and why? Well, I, I, I think that the, the goal of this administration, I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, I, th I think is doing a regional correction center. And... Um, you know, so th th this this would be part of that initiative is with these five or six municipalities a a as a way to start that out. Um, again, some of these uh, contracts, along with the Cleveland contract, were uh, were entered entered in through through um, Sheriff Pinckney and through, I believe, uh, Ken Mills came to some of these agreements. So why these were started. Initially, I don't, I don't know why these came forward initially. So we've had a lot of discussion in the executive steering committee as, as to what the right number is to build in terms of the, uh, 
the the number of detention cells. When when we finally come up with that number, is that number going to be for just Cuyahoga County's prisoners, or or are we going to add some additional number from uh, from municipalities? And and if so, is it just going to be the six, or or is it uh, a larger number that we're heading toward? That I I can't predict that at, at this time. Um, I don't I don't foresee that happening. I I think that the numbers that are being put out in the uh, in the planning commission for the new county jail I I believe that those are realistic numbers that we can hold to. But it, it's going to take cooperation from these munis- municipalities as uh, as well as the court to. Um, <coughs> you know, come to some realistic bond conditions and uh, being able to, to divert a lot of these people that are that are coming into the facility beforehand. Mr. Chairman, just a final comment. The, the point I'm trying to make is that I think some of the work we've done previously about, about these uh, prisoner contracts with other entities uh, have not been well enough planned out. And and I'm saying that going forward, we have to give some clear thinking as as to what our strategy is and why and how we're going to implement it so that we uh, have a plan in place and and know what we're doing and what we're hoping to achieve. And I I think that, you know, given that these were three-year agreements, I think that uh, by these coming down to one-year agreements, it's going to give us a better chance to uh, review these, tweak them where they where they need to be tweaked, and then uh, move forward accordingly, accordingly but prudently. For the committee, uh, we requested Mr. Applebaum to be here today, give a presentation as to where we're at with specifically a new jail. Um, and did we get a courtesy of a reply? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, I haven't heard from him. Okay, We're, but he, he got his check, though. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I actually, I wasn't aware of Mr. Applebaum, so if anything, that should be back on me because no. obviously I direct his well, no, contract because, to public uh, works. Well, no, you know, I have the ability to contact him directly, and Understood. if he doesn't have the courtesy to, to return that, I mean, maybe he's on vacation. Yeah. I don't know. I know they're working hard on this, but I'll tell you something, Mr. Dever. I heard something today, four to five years for a jail, and that's absolutely absolutely not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And I've, I've been very vocal in these meetings. The last I heard was three years if we make a decision in March. Sure. And that keeps getting pushed back by a certain group of individuals. We all know who that is as to what, what we're going to do. The decision on a jail is easy. We basically made the decision it doesn't have to be attached to the Just Center. Mm-hmm. It we're looking at more of a campus atmosphere because it makes sense. It has to be within a certain area of the Justice Center, which we've also decided needs to be centrally located in downtown Cleveland. Four to five years, unacceptable. And, I, and, and I've shared my real problems with, with the, the president of the council and our leadership, and I'm that close to suggesting that maybe we move on our own on the jail. I don't know what that committee has to do with anything with the jail. I got the sheriff over there, I got the administration over here, and you have the council here. It's the Cuyahoga County Jail. We got problems, we're putting in six million dollars into a piece of crap, and we all know it, and it's got to come down. But boy, we had to, do, we had to discuss that you Mr. Know. Chairman, if I could address that, because uh, I, I agree with you, it's not a, uh, he may have said those words, but as, as I see the process, I think it's a very con- inclusive process by having everybody involved and participating in the conversation. Certainly can make a lot of things go easier when everybody's participating in it. I do think that we are going to move forward with the jail. Obviously, the final decision is going to be laid on, on your uh, dais here as to how you want to fund that and such, but... We have been moving down a track, I believe, in which we'll be able to make a decision on the jail by June, I think. Um, then there's going to be a, a process by which where, you know, the location, which is something we're 
looking at now but haven't really isolated anybody, but we got to pick a site as to where it goes. Then it has to be designed, and then it has to be built, and then it can come down. So there's, there's a lot of, you know, that's probably more like a three-year period if we are on it and don't lose any more time. And these guys who all stand with you um, tell you, I push this as hard as you do. Every single day, every single step, I push it. And um, when they say they think they can end, uh, open up the central booking in the fall, well, I'm pushing them to do it in sometime in July. So those are the differing concepts, but we are going to push it to the point where you can make a decision as to whether you want to move forward on it or not. But I don't, um, I don't think it's a three-year, four-year, five-year project either. Well, it, I, I become concerned when I hear that from the gentleman that, that knows the most as far as building in this, in, in, in our world. And, uh, and, and you all know how, how aggressive I've been yes. in these meetings, and it and probably comes off the wrong way, but it's passion, not anger, that we need to get moving. We're the ones that had to deal with all this, and we're still dealing with it, and we're going to continue to deal with it. And when we, we have situations like this, which makes sense, absolutely makes sense 24-7, doesn't make sense any other way, by the way. If we're not, if we're going to get this up, it's got to be 24-7. Now, there's a glitch there why we can't do that. I suspect I know why. And I suspect everybody up here knows why. So we all better get pulling in the right direction or those individuals will be exposed for what's going on here. I don't have time. I don't have time. We have people die. It's, it's hard to go to sleep at night knowing that possibly something we did or didn't do created a situation that where people died. We, we don't want that. We want to show progress and moving forward. I, th I, I just think there's a lot, of, a lot of foot dragging going on in that committee. And I know everybody's all excited about going on their trips, which I'm not going on, because we hired a group that does this for a living that have built justice centers, have built jails. Why we need to see anything, I don't know. And if I need to see it, I'll get in my car and go see it. Because the closest one's Indianapolis that these folks did. So we have the, we have the design team on, on, we have the architects, we have the design team, we have the planners, we have the expertise from soup to nuts, which is why I wanted Mr. Applebaum to be here, because I have great comfort in the team that he put together. I have great discomfort in the fact that he can't return a phone call or be here. But that's, that's beside the point, and we'll get him here eventually so everybody knows where we're at and where we're going. But again, I, I, that's, that's for the committee, and I'll, be, I'll continue to be vocal about that. But as, far as, but as far as central booking not being 24-7, and somebody answered me why we wouldn't do that and how that's going to work, well, I, I think the, the, the reason why I don't have a, a complete answer on that is because we're still working through the operational aspects. And, and that's we're, fair. We're working with, the, be it the public defender, the prosecutor, the court, and we're just trying to make sure that we operationally, as soon as uh, we have it built out, ready to go, that this thing is moving along and we understand what's going on. Because right now, they do not run a 24-7 operation. It's an eight hours a day type of thing. Right. So just evolving into that takes a little bit of time here. So, well, Which goes back to my original concern. Are we going a little bit, are we, are we putting our pants on backwards? You know, mm -hmm. shouldn't we, we be ready? Once again, we had the jail situation that made, that we were told made sense. It didn't. So egg on our face. So are we going to do, you know, jump into this again? Or are we going to take our time, build it out, plan it out properly and do the right thing here. Be ready to go when it's up and run, when it's ready to go. Or are we going to take our time, which I'd rather do, and do it right. But to even suggest we're going to do all this and have an eight-hour uh, timeline as opposed to 24-7, to me doesn't make any sense, unless you could tell me where they've done a brand-new central booking where they went eight hours a day at first just to get used to it. Mr. Chairman, it's not anticipated that it would be eight hours. It's anticipated we will move 24-7. That's what we anticipate to be able to do. Okay. Earlier, again, the, it, was, it was not said. That was not said. That's why I'm bringing that concern forward because, to me, it doesn't make any sense if, unless we're 24-7 
and ready to go. Everybody pulling again in the same direction. And we're put, we, we are attempting to put the pieces together to make that happen, but that is the absolute intention. And, and, and again, I mean, this, this is something we've wanted. I've talked about this for years. I know, obviously, you've dealt with it in your profession as a prosecutor and just as an attorney. We all know the importance of this, why it didn't get done. Who knows? Here we are. We can do it. Let's do it. Let's do it the right way. I'd rather not have a jail situation where we're involving people we can't handle. And, and that happened with, yeah, with everybody. I think, I think that, that what we'll see from the consultants is exactly that. It's, you know, you can rely on my word for it so much, but you'll see that in their, their planning. That's what, that's what we're planning to put together and bring before you. And what, what we'll do is we'll bring Mr. Applebaum in, and you, you'll obviously be here for that. Mm -hmm. So at least we have an idea of, of what's going on, how it's going. I'd rather, I'd rather do it next year if it's going to be right as opposed to June or July or whatever, to force it through. And I, and I don't think expediency at this point is important. I think doing it right is important. I agree. And, and, I, and I know we're, we're, we're thinking the same thing, but when I hear testimony to the opposite, I have to, I have to raise the question as to what, you know, what's going on here. Well, I would say, that, and, and I want to defend the, uh, the public works, because they do, they do a great job, and I don't think... Uh, He's good at building things, you know. The intricacies of what the operation's going to be, that's not so much what they're, uh, they're viewing. They're looking to build things. Right. I think with the consultants, they've seen them, they've built them, they're pushing us in the right direction. I feel very confident that central booking is the answer to our problems and that the sooner we can get it up and operating, the better we can feel about our, justice, our criminal justice system here in the county. Right. I mean, there, there is some difficult road that we have to still travail here. Um, you know, we have a committee of 12 people making decisions, but we don't know. And there's, there's a good portion of the votes on this committee that may not participate in a jail or a just center. I think we need to know that, you know, back when we formulated the, the committee. People are voting on things that may not participate and we may be back at a square one situation when this is all put together. I think that needs to take care of it. And that, that's the agreement with Cleveland and the administration. And I don't know where that's at, but that should have been it. That should, we should have been waiting for that ink to dry if we're going to move forward properly on this thing. Could be a problem. On the, on the situation with Cleveland, while we have a contract with them, they're building a new police headquarters, good for them, and that's good for us. Um, but there's no discussion on a jail. What if we don't have an agreement with Cleveland? What are they going to do with their prisoners? Has that discussion been had with the administration? Of the, of it's presumed that Cleveland will continue to use the county jail for their prisoners. I think well, it would make sense because they're making they're, they're saving a ton of money. But that's because we're losing a ton of money because the testimony wasn't truthful when they came to us. And what, it's not Cleveland's fault. It was our fault. So that's going to have to be adjusted. So, you know, if they're willing to do that, pay the price where this commit, this council has always said, we're not, we're not making, this isn't making money. We want to break even right. or as close as we possibly can to provide that service to alleviate any hassles that these communities might have. We're willing to do that, but we can't take a hit. We've been taking a hit. And and sometimes it's not so easy getting some cities to recognize that. And we're kind of tied in with a contract that is not helpful to us right now. So we're going to have to look at that. So, but I'm sure the administration's on that, I would hope. Yeah, and, and I mean, to, to um, you know, you have to recognize that these felons are coming our way, whether Eventually. we have a contract with them or not. We get them. They're ours. And, you know, the state law says we have to take them. So we don't really have, there's not like a lot of leeway there. Mm -hmm. Any, yes, ma'am. If I can um, just get a little clarity. It was just um, asked about the timeline for the new Justice Center, if there is going to be one, and that was reduced now to three years. Um, and we're just getting started on the design build services that we're asked to approve today. And then from there we have construction. So how much time do you think that this um, um, 
what do you call it? And, um, central booking. Central booking. How, how much time do you think the central booking will be in effect in the Justice Center as we see it today before we would be moving to the new Justice Center if that's the direction? I mean, I guess I'm just worried about putting... You, you want the construction yeah. you want me? Well, so. I just ask. I'm sure you've... Because <laughs> I will I'm, tell you that um, we will be pushing to have it done this summer. And I'm not making jokes. I'm, I don't know if that's reality or not, but when we selected Ozen, I met with them. I told them what our expectations were and what we wanted, and we're pushing them to their, their very brink of being able to do it. I don't know if that's going to happen, but they certainly know what I think about it, and I know the construction schedule is really going to be different. But um, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm very serious, and I think that they could be done sometime by fall that we could be up and operating. I don't know if that's early fall or late fall, but I'm fairly okay. confident that we could do it. It's not, what I wanted them to do was just move some walls, paint some floors, and put some carpet down. Obviously, the Department of Corrections won't let us do something like that, but yeah. we realize, too, that this is money we're putting into a building that we know we're going to be taken down, but right. by, the, uh, by the restrictions of the state that we have to meet certain standards, it's going to cost us more money to do it. But I still think it's worth doing because it sizes the jail right, and it's going to reduce our costs once we get up and running. I, I'm very confident that uh, we'll be very pleased when we are operating a, a central booking and the, the inmate population falls and everything starts to get better as a result of that. And the inmates who we are keeping are getting treated properly. They're getting their mental health, they're getting their, yeah. their meds, they're getting uh, detox, and we're going to have a, a better population. Right. I don't think there's any question that it's going to improve what we do and it's going to be helpful all the way around. I'm I'm just asking is is it going to be built and used enough to justify yeah. the 4 or 5 million dollars it's going to take to build it only as you said to be demolished and moved. And I understand the learning curve but um just to justify to our constituents putting that kind of money into a building that probably isn't going to be long lasting. Are we going to get three years out of it? We're going to get two years, four years before we're moving into another facility, and can you justify those dollars, the return on the investment? Uh, let me stay. It sounds like your answer is yes, but I'm. That, but yeah, because and, and it's because we're in a catch twenty two. We really are. I mean, you don't really you don't really know the answer until you get to it. But the sooner we get it built and up and operating, uh, the longer it will last. Now. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we had these very same com conversations back in 2002 and 2003 about putting central booking, and it still hasn't happened. Um, while it sounds like we're committed to that right now, uh, right. To, to building a new jail, it's hard to predict yeah. when it really will happen. And so you, um, it's, a tough, it's a tough call. Do we just stop and do nothing and wait and say, oh, we're going to build a new one, which we can do. Or do we move forward with the belief that we're going to make things better all around uh, by, by taking those steps? It may be that, and it, I don't believe it's going to be $5 million. It may be $2 million or $3 million to do what we want to do. And will that money uh, get like washed into the positive over time? I think the longer it lasts is yes, but I hope it's not a long time because right. that means we haven't built the jail yet. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I do understand all that. Um, I just <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's and it's a tough call, and I understand that you know the return is that we have a better facility. Um, you know, I guess in your search of with this design build and then construction, are you thinking of not going? I mean, very minimum of what the state requires, and not doing any more than what we have to in order to reach the results. Are you thinking along those lines of? We'll just do the minimum of what we have to do in order to get yeah. to a place where we feel comfortable with our... I, I have Matt, Matt beating okay. down to make a comment on this, but just uh, you know, about a month ago, both Matt and Rhonda were down at the state to go over the concept and what we're thinking about doing. This is going to be the first of this type in the state, at least that's what we're led to believe. Yes. So it's a really innovative way of doing things that has been done throughout the country. So both our consultant is telling us that this is going to be a savings, being the jail population is going to be brought down, meaning in turn there's administrative savings because of 
just running the jail itself. And then at the same time, there's social savings for those individuals for their, so that they're not sitting in jail, that they're, they're going back to work or back with their family. Or, you know, it, obviously the hardened criminals or those that need to stay in jail will. But mm -hmm. we see a savings a benefit to the overall community of moving forward with this. Now, I know I've, I've caused a little stir on regards to the timeline, and the hope is it isn't that long time to, to make this happen. Mm -hmm. But just to get this thing up and running, to see the value of it, and, and then in turn incorporate this into our new j uh, jail facility, right. I think there's an overall savings. And I can work with my consultant to try and put some metrics to this to be able to provide back to the committee so that you're able to see what nice. you think are the overall savings for it, okay? Yeah, that would be helpful. I mean, to have it actually down on paper to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know that you're doing what you need to do because you don't want to be investing more than you have to, understanding what perhaps the long-term right goal is but to have it written with the return on the investment would be good okay thanks thank you it's, i just wanted to get that out yeah there's no question in my mind that this is the route to go and the way to do it because when the new facility opens you would hope that this would just transfer you'd be up and running not all the all the problems have been worked out and just just move right into the new facility with whatever size that is and I think Mr. Miller would be would have been happy had Mr. Applebaum been here because number seems to be dwindling every meeting uh, which is a good thing um, so anyhow that that would have been helpful but we'll, we'll get there uh, maybe the next time that we meet um, are there any other questions no uh, just like to uh, move the legislation um, the uh, I think, you know, it's been a very good discussion. I think, you know, in the end, we have to make decisions, and we are never, ever going to have every single thing buttoned up and every single thing uh, determined ahead of time. It's not possible. And if we're frozen and don't make decisions because we can't have all those answers, we won't get anywhere. So I'm very much for moving forward, and I move this legislation. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Chair? Could yes, we sir. have this on, uh, if it pleases the, the council, is to move it to second reading suspension so we can move the item along? So I, I don't see a concern with that. After Thank what you. I've said, I can't hardly object. Okay, the legislation is moved forward uh, under second suspension, or under second reading suspension. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you. And uh, just to, I want to touch on the food, where we at? Good afternoon, council members, president. There has been a team that's been compiled. We have met, we did an initial scoring. We then came up with a list of questions after reading both, both proposals. There was then phone calls set up with each of the vendors. Questions were asked and answered. And then we scored again. And we feel confident that we can come to a conclusion this week as far as the vendor who receives the award. So soon? Soon, this week. Okay, great. Any questions, any concerns? Finally, the space for the clients and their attorneys over at the Just Center. How are we doing there? I'm Mr. Chair, Matt Reimer with the Department of Public Works. Uh, so I was before you, I believe it was the last committee meeting, certainly it was last month in January. Um, we are at 100% design deliverable. It has been received from our architect. We have uh, sent that and received comments from the Public Defender's Office as well as uh, Administrator Gibson. Uh, so we have all those and are incorporating them. And our next steps, we are going to the state this week and simultaneously we'll be going to the City of Cleveland Building Department for, uh, for approval of uh, plan review of that design. So we're moving forward at, at best speed. Okay, thank you. Any uh, questions? Looks like we're going ahead, Mr. Sweeney. You happy? We happy? Happy enough. Thank you. Happy enough. Okay. Well, that's that's a that's a uh, that's a positive. I'll take. Uh, is there any anything miscellaneous that you want to, we want to talk about? Mr. Tuma is in attendance. 
Mr. Chair? Yes. Mr. Chair, Chief, Chief of Staff also wanted us to bring you up to speed on a couple other items that we're sure. doing within, within the Please. jail facility. Uh, so in the not too distant future, uh, you will see either before the Board of Control or or council uh, a project for replacing the uh, dishwasher in the uh, in the jail kitchen in jail two. So that uh, that dishwasher is it, it it leads a hard life and it is in need of replacement. So we're working with our design consultant right now. Uh, in fact, this morning we had uh, field verification for all of our mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineers. Uh, going through the jail, we have a draft construction uh, constructability plan, and we're fine-tuning that with operations of the correction center. And so you'll see a project in the in the near future to replace that uh, that system, just to keep uh, existing operations going. Uh, also. Uh, we have had a number of responses throughout last year uh, within the jail to improve the material condition of the facility. Um, as you may or may not know, th at the beginning of 2020, we started getting into all the housing units and starting doing a, a, a concentrated uh, period of maintenance um, uh, in those housing units. And that was specifically made possible by bringing on the fourth floor dormitories online. So one of those dormitories is now permanently housing inmates. The other side that has a seven-day restriction is being used to relocate inmates out of their um, housing unit for that seven-day period, doing a concentrated period of maintenance in uh, other housing units and then moving them back into a rehab uh, facility. Um, there was some media coverage on that uh, back in January uh, when we started that effort. So we have done three of those housing units to date. Um, we are uh, in back in one of those housing units again to do some follow-up work, but then we're in our fourth housing unit next week, and we have a schedule moving forward on a week-to-week -week basis, and we're trying to accelerate that, but right now we're on a week-to-week -week time frame where we're transferring inmates on Sundays, Monday through Saturday. We are working in the housing unit, moving them back on Sundays, and then getting ready, loaded up, and starting the next housing unit. So if you have any uh, further uh, uh, desires to see those, uh, we're more than happy to walk uh, members of council through through those areas. Just ma'am. How many, uh, to the chair, how, how many uh, housing units do we have in total? I can give you that answer uh, offline, uh, uh, Councilwoman. I don't have that uh, committed memory. I apologize. And I think finally, Sheriff, uh, the numbers have been pretty good in the past couple months. How are we doing? Are we good? The numbers have been good. Uh, today's number was uh, downtown was 1,900. Um, we've, been, we've been ranging between uh, you know, 1865, 1900, a little over here and there, but we're uh, doing transports daily out to the Lorraine Correctional Institution. So as fast as they're getting sentenced by the court, we're getting them in vans or putting them on, on the bus and we're, we're moving them out. So um, the, the, the number has been good. Okay, anything further? Yes, ma'am. Um, do you anticipate that you are on a track where they will stay and stabilize at that number, or do you think we're just in a lull with the seasons coming ahead of spring and summer that they tend to peak? Well, you, I, is it I, more strategic that they're lower, or is it more the time of year? I, I, I think it, it kind of goes with the time of year, at least from my experience. It seem, seems like during the winter time, um, you know, some some of these folks, unfortunately, they look for ways to to get off the street. Especially, you know, your your homeless, your your mental health people, and uh, that you know they you're you're drug addicted. So they they come in, they get their rehab, what what have you, their their medical treatment, and uh, then they go back out on the street during the during the nice weather. So um, you know, I'm I'm hoping to see that that number come down. And, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, through the bond reform that, you know, the, the court's working with us on that. And, uh, you know, I think, think that just adds to the mix. Okay. So you think that hopefully some of the strategic things you put in place beyond weather will help keep that number? At yes, least. I'm, I'm hoping so. Yes. Okay. It would be interesting. Thank you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Through the chair to the sheriff, does that 1900 number include um, the Bedford jails as well? Or it's just um, no, no, it, no, it doesn't. No, Bedford is a, uh, a separate count. I don't have that in front of me. I'm sure Director Gibson has it with her. Uh, but we're usually averaging about, uh, I don't know what is, what is it today, uh, 66 at Bedford today. And how many can they hold? I believe um, 
116. 116. And I know we had we had issues before. Um, there was so you have 1900 today downtown, but there was issues before moving some of the downtown to Bedford because of medical. Did that ever work itself out? So Metro is currently in process of increasing the level of care at Bedford. But it hasn't happened yet. Slowly, it's happening. Uh, I just got an email from Metro mm. this week about that. Okay. Can you get a timeline of when they think they're going to be finished with that? I don't believe she gave me an end date, but I can follow up on that and let you know. Yeah, just the steps of what else do they have left uh, for that. Sure. And with the 1900 today, is that causing any red zoning or no? So I'm not aware of any red zoning this morning. I did not look at the report. We do have some mandatory training going on today. So I, again, I would have to look at the report to tell you if that was happening today. We do have now the Euclid staff that are now downtown, so that assists a lot as well. I just think of being able to utilize Bedford jail more effectively you the, know, help us out down here sure and and the challenge with bedford is that it has a lower classification while it's a full service jail it has some limitations on who we can put there uh, not just because of the health services or what have you but we did make a change that the weekenders that were previously reporting to euclid are now reporting to bedford so I think you'll see a slow uh, increase in those numbers as more and more people start to report there. Thank you. Okay. If, uh, if anything, that just uh, reinforces the need to get moving on the jail and to get that new facility open and make it obviously better and safer. So I think we're going in, great, in, a, in a good direction. Uh, bumps along the way. That's why we're here. We'll get through it. I appreciate everybody here. It's been a great discussion. The information has been very helpful, and we appreciate each, each and every one of you, what you do and how you do it. So with that, um, nothing further. Thank you.